It's my pleasure to welcome Nicholas Lewis uh, with us this afternoon. Nicholas is a Senior Associate Dean and Special Advisor to the President for Strategic Engagement at the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia. An accomplished clarinet player by trade, Nicholas held the position of Associate Dean of Student Affairs at Yale Divinity School and has presented major workshops for the Yale School of Music community this past year on building ethical communities. Nicholas, welcome. David, thank you so much. It is a joy to be with you and to be with all of you. Uh, I must say, I, I was that person who was dipping into your various uh, room conversations and I was really trying my best to be a fly on the wall. But what was so incredibly clear is that the conversations were gen were generative, they were spirited. Um, and really, the, what I was left with an abiding sense that people really are wrestling mightily with how it is that we reimagine this world, that reimagine this ecosystem for musical learning. And so just a few things that uh, have sort of risen up to the top. I I'm sort of reminded of some of the comments that have come from some of the previous sessions. And in particular, I, I want to, to call it Jen Olson from Think 3060 Arts, this idea of fostering a shared vision. And so one thing that is clear across the groups is that, you know, we are coming from so many different particular contexts. I mean, you know, a great deal of diversity and how it is that we are seeing the landscape of how it is or we were called upon to, to serve in this way. Um, and at the same time, you know, dealing with very, you know, the particularity of various communities with different challenges and different opportunities. And what I might offer is that one way of getting towards this idea of a shared vision is through shared values. This idea of values being that thing that gets below the idea of a politic or an ideology and quite often can become that terrain where we can find quick and fast association. And so I, I also wanna connect this to a, a comment that was made, and I can't remember exactly the attribution, but uh, I think it was in the same panel with Jen Olson and Tark Ward, where um, you know we we're talking about the various accountabilities that we have. You know, some people have stakeholders, some people have funders, some people have school boards to which to whom they are accountable. And nevertheless, I think there is this place where we can find a really beautiful space of you know what is it in terms of value that we seek to foster that will bring about this idea of a more vibrant, you know, musical learning ecosystem. So some of the things that are coming at specifically out of your groups, I want to call out group one, uh, were things that were coming up were culture, context, and valuing intr the intrinsic music making cultures of the, the communities that they serve. Um, this idea of teaching, uh, you know, teaching for appreciation versus teaching to engage and share musical culture. And I, I must say, I love and am, am, am quite compelled to this idea of sharing musical culture. And then yeah, I was able to pop over to group three and I, I wanna give you a, really, a shout out for this. I mean, it's really the idea of celebrating art being synonymous with sharing, celebrating culture. Uh, in a way, hearkening back to the words of Tariq Ward from uh, ELMA uh, Philanthropic Services, talking about the connection of how students are coming with a musical culture and then, you know, wanting to get to this piece of social capital. And it seems, it seems that many groups were quite compelled by this. I also want to encourage people to, you know, to review the Google Docs and in groups that were not your own, because there are some real strong themes that are coming up. Uh, Anti-racism is one is a theme that is coming up in many of the PowerPoints. Racial equity. Well, once again, I mean these ideas of getting to racial equity in this idea of social justice. One way of you know doing this work is that you know the, the idea that we all need to work together collaboratively in this. And you know, the, there's a wonderful saying, many hands make light work. And so one way that we can, we can find this commonality is around shared values. And so that's why I'm trying to lift up and elevate some of the values that I have heard and in, heard people engaging in the context of their small group chats. Um, there's this uh, idea of making musical culture the cornerstone of curriculum. Musical culture, the cornerstone of curriculum, emphasizing cultural particularity in music making. Once again, these themes of musical culture, particularity coming up over and over throughout the rooms. 
Um, and then this idea of really making sure that as a value, that student-centeredness is, it, it is the first point of departure, mirroring once again the words from Tark, where you acknowledge where a learner is. And, and as my grandmother used to say, who was, was a prolific music educator, I mean, you have to first acknowledge where the child is, hold their hand, and then lead them to where you want to be. And what I would offer, what I would add to that is like in the, pos in the process of that, what kind of relationship is fostered? And so much of what has come up for many of you is relationality as a prime a sort of um, ingredient in animating the fostering of these ecosystems. I mean, how can we get sort of to the level of the relational that is below that of, you know, trying to represent our respective positionalities and our priorities? And how can we see this sort of broader vision of how we can enter into a space of really uh, this is sort of emergent becoming of sharing the value of fostering music in the lives of people, of human people, taking people where they are. I just wanna say, you know, we can also have questions in the chat. So please feel free to have your, your questions there. I see Mary, Mary coming back on. Oh, thank you so much, Nicholas. And I invite David to come back on too. I was uh, also studying the Google Docs while people were populating it. And I want to thank everyone for taking the time uh, and being thoughtful with one another. And I hope you've made some connections too along the way. Uh, Nicholas, I'd like, I'd like you to just address uh, what are the attributes, both personal and the values within an organization, that we really need to get to that place of shared values? We can say we have to have a shared value. Okay, great, great. But what is the attributes of the pathway we need to get to that shared value, to be that shared value? What's the attributes that we have to be uh, mindful of? Well, sure. So, I mean, I, I think a shared value that, you know, uh, that we all share <laughs> as music educators in, in this field is that we share the value of creativity. Now, then it becomes a question of how it is that we bring it to bear in the context of our enterprise. But I mean, you know, focusing on pure creativity when we're, you know, whether it is whether or not we're looking at our young, uh, our young students or whether or not we're working with our colleagues, I mean, making that a priority and how we are sort of reimagining the, you know, the addressing of problems. I mean, COVID has dealt us um, a, a rather difficult blow. And at the same time, we see in the midst of challenge, there's all this opportunity. And it really is going to be a, a sort of mindset of creativity that will be most generative in coming up with various iterations of how we can fashion a, a path forward. I would say also integrity is, is a value that clearly is, is shared by many of the people here. I mean, people who are really committed to their communities, community committed to the challenges that they see um, their their community members facing, and to really being agents for change in the midst of that. And you know, quite often when you know when we get together in sort of hybrid communities, um, you know, beyond the walls of our own organizations, our own school systems, you know, it, it really is important to take time to explore those connections of shared value. So, what does it mean to be um, to have integrity in the context of, you know, a K-12 school system. And what does it mean to have integrity in, you know, I, I just learned about this wonderful music program in Memphis uh, that's at the site of the original Stax, uh, you know, music production facility. Like, what does it mean in that context where, you know, where you're trying to sh share the, the, a love of rhythm and blues with young people in that cultural community that has hopefully a really wonderful context for that? But it really is about engaging the conversations across shared values. But I think integrity, creativity are really two great ones to start with. I do see a question in the chat. Uh, there are a lot of people here in K-12 and a lot of people from higher ed. I'm curious what Nicholas sees K-12 needing from higher ed and what he sees higher ed needing from K-12. Oh, wow. So, hmm. But when I think about that, I mean, I so I am one that has been fortunate enough to have to, to have taught 
everything from kindergarten through 12th grade, and then also in a higher ed context in undergrad and master's. And, I, and I'm largely in a context of Richmond, Virginia is, is the community that I, I'm, I'm thinking of specifically. And what is clear is that quite often the challenges that exist within the, the, the challenges that exist for, you know, music educators are mediated through broader social challenges that exist within a community. And so in a way, part of the addressing of one's classroom <laughs> in a K-12 context also has to tend to uh, this idea of like, how do we really alleviate some of the social factors that are pressing upon our students? And what I would say is, you know, it, it is really important for higher ed contexts to recognize that and to think about how they can be participants with K-12 at the level of K-12 to really sort of open up greater opportunities. I, I heard from one group, I think it was group five, where, I, you know, I, University of South Carolina and in another school uh, were opening up their spaces to have wonderful tours of young people coming through just to be able to reimagine what is possible for engagement. I think that's one really great thing. What I would say is for K-12, it's really important to name what the challenges are and, and you know, in the greatest possible particularity so people understand and are brought to that positionality because quite often as a K-12 educator, you know, we are in our, in our own world and we really are sort of, um, folks are not aware of the challenges that we see. And so it, we have to render visibility, not only to those challenges, but to the wonderful, vibrant cultures of students that exist in these places, because quite often, you know, school systems can be named, can be framed as problems. But the fact is, we're talking about people who have tremendous potential and who actually come with great musical cultures. And so, it's about honoring those folks while naming and being clear with challenges. I hope you that know, gets that. Yeah, you know, and Nicholas, I think it really also speaks to the unique role that uh, music educators play for uh, social emotional learning. We know things about kids that maybe other educators do not. We've taught them over long periods of time. We've often taught their siblings. In some syst systems, we also taught their parents, right? And um, and I think, uh, I think to your point, I, I see incredibly robust ecosystems sometimes, but the challenge of always, how do you bring student and parent voice to that mm -hmm. can be difficult if you're not always thinking about what's the outcome you want to see, not just the input you want to implement. Absolutely. But once again, with that, the challenge of engaging parents with their students, I mean, this idea of cultural particularity is a wonderful place of finding common ground in, you know, in geographically specific places. Um, you know, to come a, to come together as, you know, a, a group of people like sharing in musical culture, where, you know, that sort of decentering where the power exists in terms of who owns the musical culture? Who are the practitioners? Because, you know, as we've heard from so many different people, like everyone has a musical context, everyone has a musical culture. And then can we honor that and then find that shared place together where we are sharing like a wonderful meal? I mean, that is really ideally what I would love to see. 